All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to be going through a practice problem talking about a parallel plate capacitor. Now, the first thing that we want to look at is we want to try and find out all the variables that I can get just through looking at the information that was given to me. So, so far what I have is I have a sheet of metal, which is 4 centimeters by 4 centimeters, and I know it's separated by paraffin, and the difference in potential between my negative plate and my positive plate is 15 volts. I was also given that the capacitance is 20 picofarads, which is 20 times 10 to the negative 12 farads. So, what I can get from the information right now is I can say, well, I can find out what my area is. I know 4 centimeters and 4 centimeters. I need to turn both of these into meters. So, 4 centimeters is actually 0 0.04 meters. Which then if I find out what my area in terms of meters squared is, if I take 0 0.04 multiplied by 0 0.04, I should get a value of 0 0.0016 meters squared. Now, I also have to find out what paraffin is. What does this mean if I have paraffin in between my, my two capacitor plates or if I have something like air? So paraffin actually has a K value, which I can look up in our book, of 2.2. Now this kind of gives me a little bit more information of what I can use. I have a capacitance, I have an area, and I have a K value. And the first thing I want to look at is what can I do? The easiest formula is immediately when I saw the C and I saw the A, I know that I can get the charge. How much charge is built up on my plates? If I fully charge my, my capacitor and then I pull my, my battery off, so now it's just a charged capacitor, how much charge is there? Well I can say charge is equal to my capacitance multiplied by my voltage. Throwing all of these numbers in here, this is what I should get. 20 times 10 to the negative 12th farads multiplied by 15 volts ends up giving me a total charge in coulombs of 300 times 10 to the negative 12th coulombs. Or I could also write that as 0.3 nanocoulombs. I could also write it as 300 picocoulombs. So now we're going to get into part A. And to find the separation distance, what we're going to do is we're going to need to know our area. We're also going to need to know our capacitance. And we're also going to need to know our K value. From there, everything else that we need is going to be given to us. So this is the formula that we're going to use. We're going to use my capacitance. I'm going to multiply it by my K value. And then epsilon naught, which is a constant, multiply that by the area over the distance apart our two plates are. So we're going to rearrange to get distance by itself, and we're going to get this. Where now I have isolated my, the distance between our plates. Once I put everything back into our formula, this is what we're going to get. Where now I have found out that my distance between our two plates is going to be 1.558 millimeters away, or 1.558 times 10 to the negative third meters. So now I've added one more piece to our puzzle, which is the distance between our plates. And what we're going to try and go through now is we're going to try and find out what the E field is. What is the push from one plate to the other? How much desire is there for these charged particles to try and get to the other side? So what we do have right now is I've got the area. I also have charge. And using any formula that I see for E based off our formula sheet is I'm going to use E field is going to be equal to the charge per area over epsilon naught. It's going to look like this. Where we know that E naught is a constant, we also have our area, we have our charge, and we're going to get our answer by doing this. Now our electric field we ended up getting was 21,186 newtons per coulomb. And a question that often arises when students are first answering this question is they say, that seems like an awfully large number. Is this correct? And if you think, what this is trying to say is how much push there would be per coulomb of charge. And remember, one electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So if I were to take a whole bunch of electrons, put them all together, how much push would there be for these to repel? And that force would have to be monstrous because electrons don't really like each other. And yet we would have to put them all on that same plate. So in order for us to say newtons per coulomb, is a valid answer for us to have a, such a large value because in order for us to have one coulomb of charge we need to have a whole lot of electrons and that's not likely to happen.
All right, now part C is asking for us to find out what the potential energy is. And this means the potential energy stored in the capacitor. Once I have put a certain amount of charge onto my capacitor and it has a certain difference in potential, I can move it around wherever I want to and then when I release it, how much energy is going to be released. And this is our formulas that we have in order for us to deal with potential energy. Where we have charge times voltage divided by 2, or again, like I said earlier in a video where sometimes we don't want to use charge. We, don't, we weren't given um, charge. So we ended up rearranging an earlier formula in order for us to get charge by itself, and we got capacitance times voltage. And we put that right into this formula, so we get capacitance multiplied by voltage squared over 2. And I don't care which one you use, but the one I'm going to use is I'm going to use the QV. Where now I have found that this potential energy of my capacitor is 2.25 times 10 to the negative 9th joules, or 2.25 nanojoules of energy. Now, in part D, what's happening is we are taking out this paraffin filling. What we're going to do is we are going to replace it with a quartz plate. All right? So our dielectric ends up becoming, instead of 2.2, it's going to switch to be 4.3. And it's asking us to find out what our charge density is, as well as it's also asking us to find out what our difference in potential is between one plate and the other. Now the first one I want to talk about is I want to talk about the charge density. So imagine this is how our scenario worked out. What we did was we had our battery hooked up. We charged it up. It's got 15 volts of charge now on our capacitor. We built up a certain number of electrons on there, right? And then what we did is we cut the wires. We split it away. So it's no longer connected to anything. Now, no matter what I do, when I remove that filling, when I remove that dielectric, I still have the same buildup of charge on there. Would you disagree? Could you say that electrons ended up leaving? So the charge has remained the same. Right? Now, my area of 1.6 times 10 to the negative third meters squared also has not changed, has it? So my charge density, or the amount of charge I have built up per area, shouldn't change based off of my dielectric. Once I have it set up, I can put in whatever dielectric I want, and so my charge per area is going to remain the same. However, the voltage difference between one plate and the other will change. How much push is there for you to leave is going to change. And that's what we're going to look at now. So there's a step that we have to do before we can get to our voltage. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find out our capacitance. If I've put in a new dielectric, that means that my diaphragm is able to bend either more or less and so in order for us to look at that we that's based off of our new k value so our k has now switched to 4.3 what we're going to do is we're going to switch around our capacitance or we're going to find our new capacitance so my new capacitance is now at 39.3 times 10 to the negative 12 farads which does make sense because the only thing that switched was my dielectric constant. My dielectric constant went from 2.2 to 4.3. Nearly doubled, but didn't quite double. So I should go from 20 picofarads to just under 40 picofarads. And that's exactly what happened. So our capacitance has now jumped up by a factor of just under 2. Now we're finally able to find out what our voltage is. So our voltage is inversely proportional to our capacitance, correct? So what we can say is our capacitance has nearly doubled. It hasn't quite doubled, but it's nearly doubled. So what does that mean if my capacitance is ended up multiplying by 2? What happens with my voltage? Well, it should almost be divided by 2, right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if you were to ballpark a guess, 7.5 would be a good idea. And the actual answer ends up becoming 7.63 volts is my new voltage. Now that's just a quick tip when you get onto the AP exam if you get into a multiple choice question as soon as you see something where your capacitance doubles your voltage you should be able to look at and you should say well if my voltage if my capacitance doubles my voltage should do what and it should about half right then you pick the closest answer to 7.5 and most likely it's going to be right around 6.3 they're not going to put anything closer than that. So this last one is asking us to find out how much work would I have to do in order for me to move these plates an extra one millimeter apart, considering that we're going back to our initial conditions where my K value is 1.2. So we need to look at, we're changing our potential energy. So we need to find out what our change in our charges or our change in our voltage. 
Well, again, if we think about how this problem was set up, we charged up our plates using a 15 volt battery or a 15 volt voltage source. And then after that, I've disconnected my wires. They are no longer allowed to interact. So my charge won't change. So Q won't. But my voltage must in order for me to do work. So we need to find out what our formula for voltage is. And we know voltage is equal to charge over capacitance. Again, charge isn't changing, so it has to be capacitance. So when we look at what our capacitance values are, we get this. So we know our capacitance is going to be the same as Ke0 multiplied by the area that's occupied divided by the distance apart. What's happening is we are changing our distance. What I could do is I could find out what the original capacitance is, which we know it's 20 picofarads. We can solve for our new one, and we can put that into our capacitance value, and then we can put those capacitance values, we can find out our initial potential energy, we can find out our new potential energy, and find the difference between them to find out how much work I do. I think the faster way to do that will find out what is my change in distance. If I find the change in distance, I should find my change in my capacitance, and if I do that, I find out my change in voltage. So I only have to do one calculation as opposed to doing two separate times solving for capacitance and solving for voltage and solving for potential energy. So this is what I'm going to do. So with knowing that my change in my distance resulted in the change in my capacitance as well as with that change in capacitance resulted in my change in voltage, what I ended up doing was I combined all these formulas. I knew voltage was the same as charge per capacitance. So once I put that value in here, my charge ends up becoming charge squared. Q times Q over C ends up giving me Q squared. Now the inverse of C ends up giving me the change in my distance over Ke0 multiplied by my A. After I put all the numbers into it where my change in my distance, right, just the change in distance is equal to one millimeter or 0 0.001 meters, I'm just going to put this value in to my distance. My area remains the same, my charge remains the same, and K value remains the same, and all my other constants are fine. So what I ended up getting with my change in my potential energy is this. Where I ended up getting 1.444 times 10 to the negative ninth joules of energy. That's how much work I'd have to do to get my two plates farther apart. And just to make sure I double check my answer with the traditional way of finding out my change in my capacitance and then my change in my voltage and then putting it into my formula. And I ended up getting that that change ended up being 1.4451. So to be off by 1.4451, I'm fine with. That's basically negligible.